A code for sustainable homes assessment is often required by a local planning authority or housing association. This requirement can often seem onerous, expensive and complicated. So, we put together our top tips to help you comply in the most cost effective way possible. Appoint a drainage engineer early in the design process to ensure you can meet the mandatory requirements of SIR 1. To do this, you may have to use rainwater harvesting with the potential for an additional build cost. Failure to meet the mandatory standard will mean that the code certificate cannot be issued. Appoint a suitably qualified ecologist before you begin work on the site. The ecology credits are heavily weighted and can be very straightforward to achieve. Aiming for these credits can extract valuable credits from certain sites, which can lead to cost savings elsewhere in the code assessment. Complete your saps at a stage where the design can still be altered. By taking a flexible approach to the sap, you may be able to avoid the use of renewable technology, which is inherently quite expensive. Any choices you make here may impact the code assessment, and it's important to flag these up at an early stage. For example, if you're going to use an air source heat pump, you may gain more credits in Energy One. However, due to the high NOx emissions associated with grid electricity, you won't be able to achieve any credits for Pollution Two. Enhance the building fabric. By using more insulation and increasing air tightness, heat loss from the dwelling will be reduced and this will gain you important heavily weighted credits in Energy 2. Use materials from suppliers who can provide confirmation that the materials they use are responsibly sourced. This will come in the form of what we call chain of custody certificates. For example, environmental management systems or FSC certificates. If you can get hold of these certificates from your suppliers, it can gain you extra credits at very little cost. Design your dwellings with large windows to the kitchen, dining and living room, and the studies. This will gain you heavily weighted credits under the health and wellbeing section for daylight factors. Register with the Considerate Constructors Scheme. Vital credits can be gained for achieving CCS certification. However, you must register before work begins on site. Bear in mind internal water consumption. Giant baths that consume vast amounts of water and high pressure showers with high flow rates will make it very hard to achieve the level of water consumption required by the code. Be prepared to make compromises on other fittings if you want the big bath or the pressure washer shower. Educate your site team. Make sure that everyone on the ground knows how their role impacts the code. This will make implementing the code design much more straightforward and can also gain credits running a site to best practice guidance or monitoring site energy consumption. And last but certainly not least, don't leave everything to the last minute. Start gathering the evidence early on. In an ideal world, the design stage assessment should be completed before work begins on site. Doing this, you'll avoid any unpleasant surprises and it will make the post-construction stage quick, straightforward and avoid any unnecessary delays. Mm -hmm.